Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 27 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the recently constructed airspeed indicator. We're going to take that, run a number of tests on it and then we'll finish by installing that into the front dash frame. Let's buckle up. Just to recap from the previous video, we took some time to look at the CAD CAM design and that was more in terms of the stepper motors that we'd use. There was a NEMA 8 that we can see on screen now which drives a two gear system and the whole reason for this was to create the space for an X40 stepper that we can now see the image of in the bottom left and that was to fit in the gap that that two gear system created. After some quite lengthy tests of this mechanical setup, I was able to see that the tape wheel, definitely specifically the tape wheel as part of my initial design, does run reliably and also accurately to reflect what's happening in the sim. And from that point we constructed the remainder of the panel by installing the X40 stepper and also the rear layers we can see now which hold all of the various PCBs to drive it. And we then finished by taking a close up look around that newly built panel. We can now look to run some further tests and calibrate these gauges before we install them into the front dash frame. Just as I did with the standby attitude indicator, I have took the design of the marker lines I drew in a CAD CAM program, put them into Inkscape and then I've inverted them. So you've got the black background and the white text and then just printed it and stuck it straight onto a 3D print and I'm quite pleased with the finish there. The great thing with zero detection is beyond the initial starting point being set, once per revolution it ensures it's still in line with the sim. And if we look at the tape wheel now, you can see there that that shows the number of steps I've stated in the Arduino code needs to be further tweaked so it runs better and more accurately in line with the sim and I want to keep doing and following that process over and over until there's very few notable visual adjustments that occur in that once per revolution as it goes through the optical sensor. As part of the final calibration of this we'll now also look at it in terms of the X40 stepper running at the same time as the tape wheel and that will show the current airspeed and the maximum airspeed. So as I get to some of the latter tests here and I've run them for quite some time um, looking at the overall design, definitely happy with the overall aesthetic of it. I think that the 3D printed and painted needles for the current and max airspeed are looking just fine and the tape wheel's looking good too. The aesthetic aside, as I've mentioned before, all of the tests on the tape wheel, which is the uh, decimal rotary, is spot on and you can calibrate that exactly perfectly in line with the sim. But what it brings us to is the X40 stepper and if I was to do this over again and I'm going to fly with it for a while and see if I decide to do it over again then there would have to be a few changes. We have a situation here where the typical range of operation of the current airspeed needle is slightly greater than that of the range of the X40 stepper and the result of that is only really noticeable at either a very high or very low airspeed where at that point you can see the decimal rotary position relative to the position of the current airspeed. And what all this amounts to is if I was to redo this panel over again I would still use an X40 stepper but I would reduce the range of degrees that the outer marker lines are spread over. And the main outcome I need here and, and the main test to confirm is that the panel does give me a good indication of airspeed. So as well as running tests to look at the decimals of the tape wheel relative to the current airspeed in the increments of 10 knots, I can also take a look now and if I pause the sim and we'll go over to it and just look at the position of all the needles within the sim compared to what we can see are actually on the physical gauge. And this confirms the extent to which it mirrors what's happening in the sim. So we're pretty much there. I think a few more tweaks and minor calibrations and 
we can look to install this into the front dash frame. So we can go ahead now and secure this panel in place. And that's looking good. As we now look to interface this into the the main SIM pit, there's a few considerations around the RS485 network this will run on and the network as I've designed it is expandable so I've got a number of PCBs in place which drive a number of other panels to this point but this will require um, an extension of that and I've designed them to be modular so if we just take a look at that now so in each RS485 network there's one initial key master PCB which that one has three outputs for slaves and then as you build the network up the next module would be an extension board which we can see now and each extension board allows me to add up to another eight slaves to interface the airspeed indicator we're now at a point where we need to add a third module to this a second extension board Adding the modules in this way gives some flexibility around the way in which they're organised. Now the arrangement of this that I'm going to use within my front dash is to actually stack the latest module, not necessarily behind or in front of it, but actually on top. And I'll solder a different kind of RJ45 socket on, one with a uh, at a right angle. So if we take a look round to the side now, behind the front dash frame, we can see an arrangement where you've got the main master PCB and extension board, which I've put that with right angled RJ45 sockets. So when I then stack the new module on top, I'll still be able to access these ports from the side. And if we now take another glance at this, we can see it with the new extension board stacked on top. And the good thing is it's plug and play, so I can literally just take the new slave devices and just plug them straight in via an Ethernet cable. With the airspeed indicator installed and now online, I can move to the next stage of the SIMPIT, which is a bit of a research phase as I start to think ahead to the HSI and the ADI and the different ways in which I might look to recreate those. And I look forward to sharing that in the future. Thanks for watching.